Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist, got my uh, discography up here, Live in National Sawdust, Benign Strangers, Hope of Home, Perrier Street, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary is my Mel Bay improv book, and uh, the new book which is going to be called uh, Into the Labyrinth, An Anatomy of Position Playing for Jazz Guitar. It's pretty much done did the grueling editing process. Uh, it's amazing how things slip past you, especially when it's a lot of numbers and diagrams, not to mention sentences. Uh, but that'll be, uh, you know, probably out sometime in 2022. And uh, yeah, it's the end of the semester here. We're done, grades are in, everything's been finished, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, it's a rewarding, job very much musically and artistically and every other kind of way educationally pedagogically but you know it's a uh, it's hard work what we're doing you know we're not we're not playing around around here but anyway that's not what I want to talk to you about I want to talk to you about uh, the Joe Henderson tune serenity now that I'm feeling a bit of a serenity post semester this is an appropriate tune and uh, yeah he recorded it on uh, that record in and out from 64 I believe 64 65 something like that with Elvin Jones, McCoy Tyner, Kenny Durham, um, Richard Davis, that's everybody. And man, some of McCoy Tyner's best, I mean, you know, this period of McCoy Tyner, he's just on fire, unstoppable. But yeah, on this record, he's very much on fire and unstoppable, even by his standards. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a great tune. It's, uh, it's a 14 bar tune, which is kind of interesting. Um, and it has a really nice combination of functional harmony and modal harmony. Um, and in some ways, these are my favorite kinds of tunes, you know, where you get a chance to play. You know, I'm, obviously, I'm very much in the uh, classic jazz, old school uh, vibe. That's my roots, you know, my Joe Pass and my West Montgomery. And, uh, you know, as much as I love uh, more modern players like Kurt Rosenwinkel and Ben Launder and Peter Bernstein, of course, is timeless. Um, <laughs> and, and Many others, you know, of my own generation, the Mike Morenos and Lage and, and Gilad and so many other people. Um, it's always good for my style if the tune has a healthy, uh, helping, healthy dose of, you know, two fives. And it's kind of those classic progressions because that's where my roots are at. Um, and this one definitely has that along with some, you know, Joe Henderson had this great way of just sort of whimsically moving around, especially, you know, major seven, sharp 11 chords, which you hear uh, a little bit on this one, you know, the... Uh, Obviously, there's Inner Urge, and then, uh, you know, Black Narcissus has a lot of those chords as well. That's kind of one of his trademarks. But just to dive right into the harmony, it starts out with a 2-5 in C minor. But then instead of going to C minor, you get an A flat major 7, sharp 11, to a G flat major 7, sharp 11, to an E minor 7, A7. And that's uh, an interesting... Like I said, mixture of the, the functional and whimsical slash modal. Because, yeah, A flat major 7, you know, the upper structure of that is C minor, you know, C minor 9 and A flat major 7. So you can, in some ways, just resolve like you're going to resolve to a C minor, and pretty much everything works. Um, but then very quickly, you've got that G flat major 7, which is not C minor. So, you know, I'll do stuff like. So I was just, you know, arpeggiating a G flat major seven. And what I do on this tune, I was telling a student the other day, um, even though the bass motion and the chords go down in whole steps like this, like A flat major seven, G flat major seven, E minor seven. I kind of think of the E minor seven as like a G major seven sharp five, just to kind of mix it up. And I don't know, it helps me to not have to move down what I'm doing in whole steps like that. And as I've said previously, there's nothing wrong with following the bass motion of the chords. And I'm sure there's like examples of people doing that in a really shredding way. But so what I try to go for is like. Kind of go up a half step from that G flat major seven to a G major seven uh, sharp 11. Because that's, you know, the same chord scale for, that you would play for E minor 7 to A7, right? E Dorian to A Mixolydian, G Lydian, it's all D flat major. Plus you don't have very much time to do it in, you know, the harmonic rhythm. So that, 
that's uh, one way that I deal with that. Mm. Hey, sorry for the intrusion, but I just realized uh, after watching this video that I misspoke. Um, and a couple minutes ago, a couple seconds ago, I said that uh, E minor 7 to A7, that E Dorian and A7 are all the D flat major scale, but I meant to say D major scale. Gets confusing with all the flat 13s and sharp 5s and this and that. And a little bit before that, I called this chord G major sharp 5, G major 7 sharp 5. Of course, I meant G major 7 sharp 11. Okay, back to the show. And then the next uh, four bars, you have F minor, B flat 7, E flat major, and a quick 2 5, actually 2 C minor in this case. Then an A flat minor. So again, very functional there, you know, 2 5 to the relative major, of, if you think of the tune as being in kind of C, C minor, E flat major. A flat minor seven, A flat minor six. Um, where's that gonna go? So we got uh, and then you have G flat. Uh, I'm sorry, G seven, G flat seven, F seven. In a harmonic rhythm, is kind of like at least on the head. So that's G seven, G flat seven, F seven. E major, 7 sharp 11, and then a 2-5 to E flat, and then the song ends with a D minor 7 back 5, G7, and it goes back to the top. And so the harmonic rhythm of all that, I'll kind of do that, I guess that's uh, actually like 10 bars <laughs> in a little, just to show you how it goes, like F minor, B flat 7, E flat, quick 2-5 to C minor, maybe a walk down to A flat minor 6, and then G7, G flat 7, F7. So there's a lot there. Like I said, the first part is very functional. The F minor 7, B flat 7, E flat 2 5, right? D minor 7, flat 5, G7, C minor 2 5, and C. A flat minor, okay. Maybe it's 5 of C again. Could be, right? It's like a D flat 7. But then this part, maybe it's worth, uh, worth talking about a bit because I remember when I first played this song, you know, seeing G7, G flat 7, F7, and then E major, it was hard for me to not think like, okay, well, that's some type of uh, tritone substitution, back cycling, like the kind of stuff that I would see in, uh, you know, in Joe Pass and Gershwin and harmony like that. Uh, but I kind of feel like this is a little different. Uh, and what I do in these instances with this type of harmony is I look for uh, what I call in the in the book negative guide tones, in other words, common tones. You know, obviously there's this, there are the guide tones, the tones that change for each chord. Uh, but there's also like the fact that, okay, the other day it almost sounds cool if you play uh, <laughs> you can take like totally different approach to that that progression and kind of play E flat minor pentatonic it kind of works somehow well, it would naturally work on an E major 7 sharp 11 right because when you have an E major 7 sharp 11 go down a whole step I'm sorry half step and play a minor pentatonic that's a really cool sound but just the notes of that works well on the on the G7 is it the G7 uh, flat 13 at least the top part of it maybe that note not so much because it's a major 7 but then the next chord is G flat 7 so you yeah, works very well there right because that's the major pentatonic you know of uh, G flat then the F7 you know it goes by so fast you know you can almost ignore the <laughs> ignore the chords or you can take another approach treat them individually that works too F7, I definitely am hearing that it has a flat 13, even though that's not written in the harmony. Album. But again, that kind of leads me back to E flat minor pentatonic as being kind of a scale or a, a group of notes that fits that whole progression. If you zoom out a little bit, 
you know, when I was younger, it was hard for me to, to zoom out. I was so focused on, I gotta hit every chord, this is the chord, and I have to show people how I can hit the chords, and now I can hit the chords. And then I'd listen back and be like, that doesn't sound right. It sounds like I'm trying to hit all the chords, and that's not what um, I want it to sound like. So, uh, yeah. Like, what actually sounds good of You go back and hear McCoy Tyner, you know, one of the most shredding solos ever on this tune, you know, and at least at one point he kind of goes, he just plays that little one, uh, or some very, that's not exactly what he plays, but that some variation on the one, two, three, five thing. On those chords descending, and it sounds amazing, you know, because everything he plays. Uh, in this time period, you know, in general, but this time period, my goodness, is just uh, on fire. So, you know, you can go either way. It's kind of like I, I had this, some of the same things to say about Along Came Betty and a lot of these tunes where um, sometimes I want to zoom out and sometimes it's cool to like just take it chord chord by chord and play on every chord. Um, another thing that's interesting about this, uh, this tune, uh, I think, is like on the, the way they play the head. I always like when I hear two horn lines, I like to check out what the uh, arrangement actually is. You know, so the first time, you know, they play in unison, I think, or octaves, you know, but there's no. talking about so you got this again there they go I always thought that was kind of cool so like from the C minor you know this is maybe kind of obvious to have that you know the tenor drops down and plays against the E flat you know the nine to the root and then E natural or C flat to give you the minor third of A flat minor. Uh, let's see. And then plays this. It's the G7, so he does the natural kind of guide tone thing that you would think, going from, you know, B natural, B flat to A. But then instead of when the E major comes, instead of going down to G sharp, he goes down to F, which I always thought was F sharp, I'm sorry. I always thought it was really cool to go down to the nine so you get this like that's also a really slick melody at the end on the last B flat seven that you know flat 13 sharp nine flat seven to the major seven so you know it's a really great tune and yeah like I said you know playing over it it's that nice mixture of uh, functional and uh, modal progressions and you know there's this part that I've talked about you know A flat major 7 G flat major 7 sharp 11 uh, E minor 7 A7 and then this part so I have strategies to deal with with those parts of the tune the rest of it's just you know two fives and it's nice there's some nice diminished things there's a nice version as there is with many of these tunes it's a live Kurt Rosenwinkel version with the uh, sorry it slips my mind I think he's playing with a band it's in Cologne, and there's a, I think it's a German band that he's playing with, but it's great. And his, it's the first couple choruses of his solo before the piano comes in, where he's just kind of playing trio with the rhythm section. is so good. And he does some cool, there's some diminished stuff on that D minor 7 flat 5 to G7. It kind of sounds really good to get, you know, if you do the half-hole diminished. Kind of resolves nicely to the A flat major 7 sharp 11. But uh, anyway, I'll play a few, uh, maybe four courses or so on this tune and explore some of these ideas, and I uh, hope you join. Everybody have a safe and uh, happy holiday. Okay.